was January 16, 1984. The day was Monday, the time was 10 a.m. in the morning. The place was Dahran Health Center. Madame Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests. Good evening. Good evening. At that moment, I was bored. <laughs> I was surprised with a lot of light. So, I, after the period of darkness for nine months, so I cried. <laughs> I cried so hard that I awakened all my fellow babies around. <laughs> so, as I grew bit older, my parents always say that I have been the quietest and most obedient child in the family. <laughs> the only other thing I did was crawling towards my father's library, pulling books of the lower shelves, and flip through the pages. And if I didn't like something, I would simply tear the pages off. <laughs> and I also started to pretend to be reading, even though I really couldn't. I even pretended to be reading a newspaper oh. the theater, <laughs> the politics. And to tell you the truth, I never understood anything about politics I was in, and I still don't understand anything about politics right now. <laughs> As I said, I was very, very ambitious. If you ask me at that time, what do you want to do when you grow up? I will tell you right away, I want to be a superman. <laughs> number one, he could fly, and number two, he helped other people. So, at the age of six, I went to the Haran Ahliya school, which is a wonderful school. I learned a lot, I learned about computers, about sport, about software research, and the most the important thing to me that I gained from school was friendship. And also, one more important sad fact, actually, I learned at school, that there is no such thing as Superman. So mm -hmm. I decided to let go of the flying part of my dream and stick to the other part of helping other people, which led me to medical school. To most people, medical school is a nightmare, with a complex word, difficult to pronounce, and even more difficult to remember, and huge books. But to me, that was a blessing. As you already know, what was my first hobby? <laughs> yeah, reading. So, and believe me, there is nothing more fascinating than reading a medical books <laughs> and learning the secrets of the human body. It is something really useful that you apply every single day. So, at the first day of medical school, I made a promise to myself that I'm going to work really hard at the academic year, and then I'm going to reward myself by the end of the year, the summer holiday, to travel somewhere new, get into a new adventure, and meet new people. So in the short period of six years, I've been all around the world, from the Far East to the Far West, all around Europe. I met a lot of new people, I've been through a lot of new adventures. I learned even new languages, Spanish, 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 Italiano, a poquito, poquito Espanol. So, and then by the end of 2007, I graduated with honors from King Fashion University Medical School. <laughs> to get my MD certificate. So I did the first part of it in the surgical part at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas, and I was so lucky to work with the best doctors in the world. I got a great learning experience and it was a wonderful. But I didn't stop there. I also wanted to try the Canadian medical system too. So in January I went to Montreal, Canada, to McGill University, and it was freezing. It was below freezing. It was really, really cold. I made it through the wrong time. But it was warm by the excellent learning experience and by the loving, welcoming, hospitable people of Canada. So by the end of August 2008, I finished my internship and I get my MD certificate and I joined Aramco. And I'm proud that since then I've been the youngest physician in Samso. And in summary, Traveling is my hobby, saving people's lives is my job, and back to Madame Fosmatis. <laughs>